you are listening to the Pulse, Rod Murray's e-learning tech podcast, number 113. Well, that's a clip from Scotland the Brave, performed by a pipe and drum band from St. Andrews University in Scotland. Now, this podcast is quite a departure from what I usually do. Rather than an interview, I decided to do a voiceover PowerPoint of sorts using video podcast technology of a presentation I gave recently. And the reason I'm playing bagpipe music should become clear shortly. So without further ado, here's my presentation. Hello, I'm Rod Murray, and I'm here to give you a abbreviated presentation on the use of iPad and Apple TV in the classroom, uh, especially around our pilot program, the pilot we had for I- iPad. I should also say AirPlay because AirPlay is one of the technologies that enables Apple TV to be projected in the classroom. Now you should know this was an abbreviated version of a presentation I gave recently at the International Association for Medical Science Educators in St. Andrews University in Scotland. I left out a section on classroom pedagogy and concentrate here on the use of technology in the classroom and our pilot study. But to give you a brief taste of what it was like in St. Andrews, here's a short video. So it was a great place to be. I felt very fortunate. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge Richard Cosgriff, who's my Director of Classroom Technology here at U-Sciences, and Catherine Bensley, Associate Professor of Chemistry and Biochemistry. U-Sciences, who we are. Here's a little bit about our university, private comprehensive co-educational university founded in 1821. We're proud to say that we're the first school of pharmacy in North America. And here's a little bit about our campus in the University City area of Philadelphia, just behind University of Pennsylvania. We have almost 3,000 student FTEs and 25 majors through five colleges. From the beginning, it's been about discovery, inspiring students to seek, to learn, to innovate. Their curiosity, their love of science, and their passion to discover has helped us grow into a major university. Just as we've evolved, so has our identity. In the 12 short years since we became University of the Sciences in Philadelphia, we've already outgrown the name. Our history and heritage, our unique DNA remain the same, but now it's been transformed into a name and logo that expresses our growth, our broader reach, and our potential for the future. Presenting U-Sciences, University of the Sciences, and the growing family of colleges within it. With this dramatic transformation, we are not just showing a new face to the world, we are inviting the world to discover a dynamic new presence, a place where healthcare and science converge. So I hope you don't mind the little advertisement uh, from You Sciences. Of course, uh, when I was in Scotland, I had to tell folks a little bit about who we are. Okay, let's first talk a little bit about how entertainment technology always enters the classroom. Uh, I seem to remember at my former institution there was evidence that the stereo opticon was used way back when to help students learn physiology and anatomy. That was certainly an entertainment device that converted for use in the classroom. Then uh, if you're old enough you'll remember film strips in the classroom. And of course the great advance of television uh, being brought into the classroom. Now you might remember, uh, again, if you're old enough, Viewmaster. Um, this is a screenshot of the use of uh, Barrett's collection of uh, neuroanatomy figures uh, put on stereoscopic ScreenMaster Viewer. And then, of course, along came the VHS player and the video disc. Now, f- many of my friends at the meeting in Scotland were former participants in the Slice of Life conferences. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Slice of Life originally started out as a way to share uh, pathology and anatomy images, and they pressed them on the very large format, LP-sized 
uh, video disc that could hold up to 50,000 images. So that was certainly well used uh, for teaching anatomy and pathology. And then of course uh, along came the CD-ROM and DVD and these obsolete the, the video disc technologies. And then along came the iPad. Uh, here's a screenshot of an iPad with one of the more well-known um, educational apps. And for those of you who have never used an Apple TV, uh, this shows you the size of it. It will fit in the palm of your hand. It's a, a little bit larger than a uh, hockey puck. Uh, and we'll be talking about how that's being used. So if you look at uh, adoption of entertainment devices, uh, the iPad has the fastest adoption in history. Color, color TV took about 19 years to reach 10 million households. The VCR about 12 years to reach 10 million households. The CD player about seven years to reach 10 million and the iPad less than a year. I think it was about eight months before the iPad reached 10 million households. So how do you use the iPad and Apple TV in the classroom? Well you have to hook the iPad up. You can hook it up wired but that doesn't make it very mobile. So fortunately since iOS 6 iPads came with AirPlay and this is software that allows you to wirelessly connect to the Apple TV and the Apple TV then is located close to the projector or the flat screen uh, TV and here's where you can then wirelessly project whatever is on your iPad to the classroom projector. Now if you don't have Apple TV, in fact when I was giving my presentation in Scotland uh, there was no way I was going to be able to hook up a, an Apple TV to their network. Uh, it just wouldn't support it. So what I did and what worked pretty well started out again with the iPad with AirPlay but instead of connecting it wirelessly to Apple TV I connected it to my laptop using special software called Reflector and this runs either on a Mac or a PC and this is a receiver for the AirPlay technology and can receive the images and then of course what's ever displayed on my Mac laptop in this case was wired into the classroom projector and projected. So that's the technology I used during my presentation. Now getting into what we did with our iPad Pilot. Just a brief overview. It started in the fall of 2011 and the spring semester also. Uh, and the reason we did this was to help improve pedagogy by engaging students. And here we're going to take a closer look at some of the innovative ways one of our instructors utilized the iPad in her course. Of course, and in planning all this, um, the faculty participated from the deans uh, down to some of the faculty volunteers. And all in all, we had 100 students participating in the pilot. And these are mostly chemistry, I think about 60 chemistry students and 40 physical therapy students. And one of the key things we did was to get the faculty to attend professional development cohorts uh, where once a month we would all get together and talk about the use of the iPad and they would share their experiences and we could help them solve problems and so on. Also we gave the faculty a stipend so that they could test different apps before they would use it uh, in their class. And some of the apps are cheap but some are a little pricey so we gave faculty up to $100 to purchase their own apps and during the professional development cohort meetings they could compare and contrast and, and decide which apps they were going to use in their classes. Notice our little uh, iPad pilot there. Here's Catherine Bensley who will give a brief introduction. Hi, I'm Dr. Catherine Bensley from University of the Sciences, Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry and I used the iPads this past year in my Principles of Chemistry class which is a freshman honors level chemistry course. So over the summer we decided that we were going to have iPads used in the course. This was exciting but also a little terrifying because I'd never really used any sort of technology like this much less in a class. So when the students arrived on campus all 40 of them received an iPad and together we embarked on our iPad adventure. <laughs> so thank you Dr. Bensley and I'll be showing you a little bit more about uh, how she used it. So the iPad as I mentioned was used to help engage students in the classroom 
And so what we did was we made sure that the students had a good orientation to some of the must-have apps that are out there. And I'll be talking about some of these other issues in more detail. First uh, was the orientation to various apps. Certainly using the iPad out of class to read books, textbooks, uh, to do some research. We had a, a librarian come in and talk to the students about uh, various uh, research tools they could use on their iPad. But it's recognized that the iPad is really not a substitute for a full laptop or desktop computer. But nonetheless, it was a great tool in class. And one of the ways it was used in class, Dr. Bensley called a scavenger hunt. She would ask the students to go out and do some research and find discipline-specific apps that they might be able to use for their chemistry class. And uh, this engaged the students. It gave them something to do to participate. And they would come to the front of the class. And um, this is before we had Apple TV in the classroom. So they would connect their iPad to the projector at the front of the room in the podium and demonstrate their apps to the rest of the class. Now, another thing that Catherine Bensley did was use the audience response system, Turning Point Anywhere. The students would purchase a license for uh, responseware or um, just go to rwpoll.com. So this would actually be usable on any uh, internet-enabled device. But since all everybody in her class had iPads, they would use uh, responseware to, uh, to answer poll questions. Today, however, we would recommend Learning Catalytics, which is an excellent audience response system. It has some very uh, interesting features. It's not just multiple choice, but you can have students uh, draw and see the composite results of giving a drawing exercise. In this case, students were asked to draw the, uh, the ray that's reflected uh, off of some mirrors, and you can see the correct responses in green and the incorrect responses in red. Another feature of Learning Catalytics is that uh, when the students sign in to use the device, they can indicate which seat they're sitting uh, in the particular classroom. So the instructor can tell right away you know, which students got the answer correct and, and which got it wrong. Another thing that uh, Dr. Bensley did was give what she called intellect questions. And what she would do is allow the students to use the free Air Sketch program on their iPad, which allows them to draw and then save the drawing uh, as a PDF, and they would upload it to a shared Dropbox. And then the instructor could, in class, then go to Dropbox and download specific uh, responses from her students and, and show them off in class. Today, what we'd recommend, however, is using Apple TV. This way, you're not limited to a specific apps such as AirSketch, you could use almost any app, it could be text or whatever, and then the student would connect to the Apple TV in the classroom. And so she could call on a specific student, say, why don't you show me what you have and be presented to the rest of the class through the iPad with AirPlay. Another important use of the iPad, at least from the instructor's point of view, was to, and again in terms of flipping the classroom, was to create pre-lab videos that the students would view. Now, this is a very clever uh, discovery that Catherine Bensley made, and what she did was she used AirSketch as a way to annotate some uh, PDFs, for example, uh, the, the pre-lab instructions. She would use AirSketch. Now, AirSketch has a built-in web server. So you have AirSketch running, and as long as it's on the same wireless network as your uh, laptop as your desktop or laptop computer, you can connect to the iPad and show what's on your Air Sketch. And so she did this in her office, and then used Panopto, which is a lecture capture recording system that we have licensed uh, throughout the university. So she was able to bring up Panopto and record her pre-lab video. And to show you a brief example of that. You're going to take a particular amount, 0.5 XX grams of your unknown, and react it to water. Okay, now I'm going to sped this up so you uh, can see her green drawings come up there. But you can see how it's capturing, uh, Panopto is capturing her whole um, browser. So let's flip the page, then do our calculations. 
So it's a little cumbersome to use. It's a, you have to juggle a couple different applications. So today there is a better way that we would recommend for this sort of, uh, if you want to use your iPad for drawing especially, instead of just doing Panopto for a voiceover PowerPoint, if you really need the drawing, you could use another iPad app called Show Me. And here's a little sped up uh, demo of Show Me. The nice part about Show Me is that you do your drawing and upload it to the Show Me website. And once it's up there, you can then download the full video. And that's a pretty unique uh, feature. So you can use that video, put it up on the learning management system, and allow the students to watch, watch the videos. So what did the students um, say? We gave them a, a survey and we asked them how uh, on a scale of one to five is the iPad difficult one or very simple to use and by an overwhelming majority they said it was pretty easy to use the iPad. We then asked them to how they use the iPad in class in terms of flipping the class. Uh, did they use it individually, uh, mostly collaboratively, or a mixture of the two? And then we asked the students if they help, if it helped them to actually learn in class. One not very helpful or five very helpful and you can see about 65 percent said it was either helpful or very helpful. But let's hear from the actual students. What did they really have to say? Here are the three testimonials. I'm Catherine Jaranko, and I had Dr. Bensley for Principles of Chemistry. It was a really good class. Um, when we found out I was getting an iPad, I had no clue what I was going to do with it. And then she explained that we were going to be doing problems in class with it. We were going to be uploading and downloading different apps to help with other things. And we all had to find our own app. And one of my friends found an app that was Conversions. And it was really helpful because I'm not the best at conversions, so when we needed to convert something, I could just plug it in and it would pop up like 50 different answers just for that one, one syllable conversion. So I had exactly what I needed right at my fingertips. My name is Adekunle Adejari. I was a student in Professor Bensley's class for uh, Principles of Chemistry. During the um, semester, I found that I basically used the iPad more and more as the year progressed. Um, at the beginning, I found it just pretty interesting just to get an iPad. Like, you hear about an iPad, you're like, oh my gosh, it's an iPad. It's like the best thing ever, it's Apple. Um, but the first couple weeks I was like, eh, I haven't really used it for much. But as the weeks went by, I started to use it more and more for like studying on the go, for getting through um, various notes before classes. I used it for biology, I used it for math, I used it for chemistry, mostly for chemistry. Um, but I was able to find it useful for almost every class. There are very few classes which I didn't have, which I didn't use it for actually. Um, probably the best part about the iPad would have to be um, the fact that it gives you more mobility than you would think with the apps. Hello, I'm Chris Foley. I'm a second year pharmaceutical chemistry student at University of the Sciences. I was in Dr. Bensley's class for the iPad pilot group. I have to say at first I was somewhat worried because they were giving me an iPad, an Apple product. I'm, when I'm more of a Windows kind of guy and I was just worried that the whole project would be a flop but it actually turned out pretty well. The ability of the iPad to record lectures, to take notes on, to use apps. For example, we used an app in class where we had to do various calculations and we uploaded it on Dropbox, which I thought was pretty cool. Likewise, our school uses Blackboard and the IT department had a Blackboard app that we incorporated into the iPads that were pretty useful for checking our grades. Also, we watched pre-lab lectures and other chemistry related discussions on the iPads for lab but otherwise, I have to say, looking back at it, that it was a pretty good experience. And I'm really glad that I was in this group and that I now have a free iPad. Overall, I think the whole project was a great success. And I think the students really enjoyed it. And it really helped raise the level of their understanding of chemistry. 
So there you have it from the students and the instructor, Dr. Bensley. So here we are now in phase two of our iPad pilot. You can see we have two pilots now. Uh, it's expanded from three to five programs. Uh, virtually every department has committed to professional development cohorts. Uh, faculty were given iPads if they promised to come to our regular training sessions. So now two-thirds of our faculty have an iPad. And iPads are now required for all of our physical therapy and occupational therapy students. Uh, we would anticipate providing iPads for all students in the future. And lessons learned, I would say, are certainly the faculty training cohorts were key in this and getting the faculty to, to talk uh, together. Sometimes it's the only time they get to actually talk to each other, it turns out. And uh, this is a great uh, rallying point to get them to talk about the pedagogy of in, uh, in the classroom and, and using the iPads to their best advantage. Uh, this is, um, uh, we've opened up an iPad user group for the entire community. Uh, there's certainly more and more apps that are coming out, uh, better every day, and we hope to get more and more textbooks, uh, you know, electronic text on the, on the iPad. There are some Apple TV issues uh, because it is a consumer device. There are some issues around the network and making sure that you have passwords set on the Apple TVs so that uh, you all of a sudden don't have some student displaying their iPad on the president's boardroom Apple TV, for example. Reflector is that other software I mentioned, um, and we would like to be able to use that on classroom podium PCs. Uh, however, most of those uh, devices don't have wireless connections, so we're working with our IT folks to see if there's a way we can bridge the, the wireless uh, uh, network with the network that the podium PCs are on to enable the use of Reflector, which only costs about $12 a shot compared to uh, $99 for the Apple TV. And certainly funding for iPad per purchases for our students is, is certainly an issue. So thank you very much for listening. Here's our contact information. And I'm also listing here uh, references, so all the major uh, websites and apps and hardware that I've mentioned uh, are listed here with the appropriate URLs. Thank you again. That's it for today's episode. Thank you very much for listening. Don't forget to give Rod feedback. You can leave comments on his blog, send email to rod at rodspulsepodcast.com, or leave audio feedback on his comment line at 610-616-2199. The preceding audio commentary is the product of the author, Dr. Rodney Murray, and does not represent the official viewpoint of the University of the Sciences or any other institution or company.